we get a shower, we get a good night's sleep. It's tough waking up in the morning, but we get our little box lunches and... What you got there? I got the goodies. I got the bacon and cheese biscuit, the uh, oatmeal raisin. This is gonna pack well. We are in a hotel though, so that means continental breakfast. That means free co all the coffee that I can drink. Now, the continental breakfast for Jeremiah and Travis, bacon, egg and cheese biscuit, muffins, uh, yogurt. I mean, they were eating like kings. But I did have uh, a pack of oatmeal that I was able to put some hot water in. So I, I ate some oatmeal. I, I did get a little fruit cup that I stuck in my bag and an apple juice that I stuck in my bag, but that was for later. We wake up in the morning, I'm feeling good. There's no knee pain, moving around, trying to see if there's any gonna be sharp points. It's like, I don't wanna start and be like, guys, I'm out 10 minutes in. Good morning. I've had two cups of coffee this morning. Two, that is a sharp incline on my daily average so far. I've been able to throw down amazing number two. The weather's great, but we literally have one of the biggest days ahead of us. So then we start, my knee's feeling eh, but I'm like, all right, let's start pedaling, get it in the spot of like getting used to pedal again. If he can make it up Vesuvius, he can make it. Travis can make it, because this climb is a monster. And I was told this climb is steep and long, and Jeremiah's like, the KLM's 20 minutes. I'm like, all right, like, we're not going that slow up this thing. top we make it to the top and I'm just like holy shit he's back in the game get over that and after that it was just we're, we're done we've made it if I can get over this hill with no knee pain I can do the rest of the ride I'm so glad I wasn't doing this last night in the dark starving and so I just everything is has this positive light to it and maybe that's from Jeremiah rubbing off on me at the Death Valley project but it's just like nothing can bother me. Everything is sunshines and rainbows, no matter how difficult it is. We get to the Blue Ridge Parkway. The sun is, is shining. Things are good. It's so beautiful. The weather's great. There's this great vista to the right, and you're almost on a ridge line. So it goes from the views to your right to the views on your left, and you're just like, it's just so awesome. Trouble, stay away. From my door Trouble, stay away from my door Trouble, come back Don't come around no more Trouble, stay away from my door Trouble, stay away from my home unbelievable like that scene in Lion King where it's just like you know he surveys 
his domain over this rock face. And you're like, that it's a cartoon. There's no place in the world that really is like that. That doesn't exist. And then you see this. I mean, you can just see for so far. And it's unbelievable, really. I didn't think anything like this existed on the East Coast. Then we start hitting just a wild descent so fast. And when you're traveling fast, when you're going 45 miles an hour, it just gives you so much more ambition for the day because you're making time. When you're going five miles an hour, you know, you, your brain starts to calculate how far away and how hard. And so the vibes are up. And one of the big key points to this is that we're gonna go through the Blue Ridge Tunnel. Bit of a tragedy, but also a bit of a triumphant work for the predominantly Irish immigrants that, that built the tunnel. Of course, there uh, was a smaller percentage of enslaved African Americans that helped with the tunnel uh, construction uh, and were instrumental in the completion of what was one of the greatest public works of the time. Um, part of history, part of history that needs to be preserved and uh, learned about. The energy inside this tunnel was unlike anything I've ever experienced. At one of the points in the tunnel, there's a, a water spring coming off the wall. So we start filling our water bottle from the mountain. There you go. <laughs> it's the highlight of the trip, because everything else, all the other roads all blend together. It's green, it's awesome, that's kind of the whole trip. But this tunnel took me out of that. It was dark, it was cold, it was musty. I mean, the, the whole vibe was different in that tunnel. So that, in my mind, sticks out much more than anything else. So that's kind of something that I've never seen before because of like the sacrifice that was taken, right? The amount of lives that were lost to build it, uh, how hard it was to build. I mean, the sheer logistics and engineering to get that done so long ago is just mind blowing. And so then we're riding our bikes through it. It's, uh, it's quite special. That was, for me, maybe the highlight of the trip so far. is really a culmination of some old turnpikes, a lot of it I don't know. And so Eddie Anderson helped build the east side of the route. We had Logan Jones Wilkins in the south part of the route. I knew a lot of the stuff in the middle part of the route, the Allegheny Highlands. And then we had uh, John in West Virginia help to sort of plug this thing together. And man, if it is not amazing. Death Valley, don't want to do that one ever again. I don't want to keep mentioning Death Valley, but when that exists in your spectrum of understanding what is tough, nothing else even matters. I mean, this is this is a perfectly paved road compared to that. But this route, I mean, when I get to Richmond, get some rest, some food in me, I want to go back out in those mountains next week. I am not kidding. It yeah, is yeah. just, it's magical out here. This route is doable, for most of the public, given that your time frame isn't three days, right? If you do this over five, six, seven days, you know, doesn't matter what your fitness is, you can enjoy this area of the world. And so we went through the Blue Ridge Tunnel. It was phenomenal. The lighting was awesome. We stopped for a few shots. Things were good. But then we looked at the time and we had 30 minutes to go like six and a half miles because they shut for lunch at the post office. We've got to make this next post office drop. This is paramount to our trip. If we don't make this post office stop, none of us have food. We are not going to make it if we don't get help from the post office. A hundred miles left. We have to get to the post office. And so I put my head down and I'm like, you know, I'm up for the test. And Jeremiah just 
lights it up and just takes off. He's like, I'm gonna make the post office. So I'm dropping down into the hill, looking at the time, one minute past the hour, I pull on the door of the post office and it opens. They hadn't locked the door. And I'm like, am I in time? He's like, well, I was just stepping out for lunch. Can I help you? And I'm like, yes. So I get the boxes. I walk outside and I'm like, guess what guys? We got the goods. And I'm just, we're back in the game, boys. The dude was fuzzy and like had his hand on the key. Dude. <laughs> this is a lifesaver. So we missed the very first one. Tears. The second one, we got two packages that really turned Jeremiah and I's mental game. His package did not show up. Well, it did show, but they sent it away. So that wrecked him. So then today, this is so paramount because we're out of money. We can't go to any gas stations. We can't get anything. So all the food we have, and I think you're out of food. I've got like totally one, out. I have like one peanut butter. He's got I'm his out. emergency I'm, cliff bar. I already ate it. I'm out. He's out. So we got three things. First one, Matt Daring. Impossible route, fellas. Best of luck on the final leg of your journey. We hope Albemarle and Virginia in general has been good to you. Y'all are amazing. And those are some treats, some savory, some sweet, some energy packed. Hat tip to Seville Vegan, at Seville Vegan for the food directions. Awesome, so David is his son and his son wrote a little note on here as well. Super there's, cool. There's his son right there. Yeah. Going oh my now. Goodness, I'm eating this one right now. Oh. It's, it. it's so good. This one has my name on it, so whatever's in it, it's all mine. <laughs> Just kidding. This is from Elio. Are you kidding? There's Oreos. They sent you avocados. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Mm. Oh my God. It's real food. Not in the package. So this one's from Bike Hardcore. Uh, they're the chain lube company that we've been using. Oh. Wow. Hey! Hey! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cut, that Cut that open right now. <laughs> We're eating a pineapple right now. Real food, it's so good. It's coming to a crescendo here with like awesomeness. Dude, I'll ride a thousand <laughs> more miles after this pineapple. <laughs> the pineapple fruit jerky. This is a mango. Awesome. Yes. What? This is, mm. When you're pushing your body to the absolute limit, there's something about your, your the, how you perceive calories and how you feel calories. It gets into a real survival mode. And it's like, you look at every little piece of food and your body almost like calculates how many calories is in that and how important it is. And since we were just on the ragged edge, I mean, this is no, this is the best pineapple. This is the best thing I've ever eaten in my entire life, just given the context and when I'm eating it. Have you ever seen someone eat a pineapple like that, dude? Like 100%. This is gonna make us finish. If we didn't get this drop, we'd be in, we'd be pear shaped. To Eliel and Bike Hardcore for sending real food. I love you. about my body. I'd like to have a six pack. Unlike freaking Jeremiah who's 80 years old and is shredded like Mr. Olympia. And we are feeling like awesome. We're going to make it. But we look at the distance, it's still like 60 miles.
So at this point, I'm thinking cakewalk. I even like fist bumped Travis and I was like, dude, we've made it, it's over. The sun's out, it's beautiful, no issues. And then the clouds roll in and they're getting darker and bigger and meaner. The wind's picking up. So I have my phone, I pull up the radar and holy crap. I mean, it's like orange and red and like, it is just coming. And then it starts sprinkling a little bit. It's no big deal, it's fine. It's warm, it's not cold. Then the rain starts really coming. Then a huge thunder strike happens, like, like slaps, like Thor is pissed. He's saying, this is not impossible, boys. You're not riding into the finish with smiles on your face. So then the skies just open up and just start dumping rain. But I've reframed my thought that without this rain, we would be stopping all the time for water. Because it was so hot before this rain came, and now that the rain is there, I'm, I'm like drinking the water that's pouring down my face. I'm drinking water from the road being squirted up into my, my mouth. I, I think once we got close to the end, you know, Travis was a little less interested in getting to the finish. Uh, I think he was cold too. It was weird, like I didn't, I don't think I chose my emotions. At one point I was like laughing and crying for no reason. I was just, my body was just, I think so cracked mentally and emotionally and physically at that point, it was just, I was done. I am shivering, out of food, I am cracked. feels damn far away when you've been pedaling for nine hours. We had been through everything. We've been through the heat, through the cold, through the fog, through the rain, through the forest, through the gravel roads, through the tunnel. We're drenched, we're soaked, we're tired, we're hungry. Travis is barely able to make it. I mean, his, his head is drooped, the, the kid wants to quit. emotion that I was hoping to have last time. So today was rough, 170 miles, 14, 13,000 feet of climbing, torrential downpours. That was just magical though. I mean, every flavor of terrain we've seen today, from cobblestones, to the green of the Piedmont, to dust, steep pavement. I mean, the city, the mountains, the tunnel, it was phenomenal. I don't want these to come off as like commonplace, like, oh, it's no big deal. I mean, these, this, this was very difficult, but I will give it up to the bike packers, the true bike packers that 
would continue after this. If we had to camp again tonight under this tree with so like, and then start tomorrow with soaking wet clothes and no food, I mean, this, this is one of those things where we only did three days, we got a little taste of it. That's about is all I want. And Travis felt better today. We hit the first climb, Vesuvius, very steep. And I'm thinking if it doesn't hurt on Vesuvius, I think he can do it. And, and sure enough, he made it over the top. It was phenomenal. Uh, I, I think that is really like one of the highlights is Absolutely. just to see, I mean, he's 19 I, I, years old. I mean, a 19 year old <laughs> finishing this is, is no joke. Yeah. So as we were riding today, we saw this little sign on the side of the road. It had a quote on it. It just seemed so fitting. And it goes something like this. It's impossible, says ego. It's risky, says experience. It's pointless, says logic. But give it a try, says the heart. The Canyon Endurance was the perfect bike for this route. You know, you got cobblestones, you got gravel, you've got a uh, little bit of bedrock, but a lot of pavement too, and uh, the bike was the bike. Uh, we had IRC sand uh, protection tires, GT Swiss, GRC 1400s, perfect. And um, man, Apodora bag setup that we have here, which is a little bit more of a racing configuration, was perfect. We had flow formulas for about the first six hours of the ride until we went to our independent mode, uh, but it was great. Eliel clothing was phenomenal. Shout out to Eliel. Uh, also a huge thanks to Whoop. Uh, Travis and I use a ton to make sure that, you know, what are we doing? What are we getting sleep? How are our bodies responding? Uh, also a huge thanks to Strava. I mean, they really help us map this stuff out and to create these routes because we're just sort of piecing together a lot of stuff that's already out there, but we got to make it all one.